Welcome to another video about React Hooks. Today I want to show you how you can do Ajax with Hooks and how you can create custom Hooks with React Hooks. And this is a new feature and custom Hooks are very powerful. It allows you to encapsulate your most commonly used things into their specific function. So what the way I like to think about Hooks is that they're like kind of like reusable functions that you can import and export all over. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how we can convert from a standard React component that's class-based into a hook-based component. And I'll show you, you'll see the difference in how much less code we have to write and how much easier it is to understand. So this is a component that I have right now. And it's a very basic component that every time you refresh the page, it goes out to an API and gets the user data with their avatars. So the endpoint I'm using is this public endpoint from request response.n. And it, they provide you a API where you can pass it a ID and it will fetch the user. So this component here, it's the standard classic components from React.js where you have a class component, you have constructors, you have super, your, st your states, and here you have a function and you have to do the binding. And then when the component mounts, I go out to get the data from the API, which is this function here. And it does a async away to fetch the data. And, then, and when it finishes, it does the set state. And then in our render, we look for that state value. And if it's set, we uh, initialize it and then we display the values. So as you can see, there are a lot of boilerplates in this uh, this uh, class version of the components. You got the supers, the constructor, the binding, the states, and all the set states, and the component did mount lifecycle hook. So this is uh, very, I would say, cumbersome. So I want to show you how you can write all of this stuff with hook. So let's get rid of everything here. And we're going to do it via the hooks method. So first, we need to get rid of components. We don't need it anymore. We need to do use uh, fetch, use states, and then use effect. We'll import those two from React. And then we need to call, we need to create a functional component for hooks. Remember, hooks do not work in class components. So we do export default function app. So now this in here, we can do uh, what we need to do in a very simple manner without all those lifecycle hooks. So for us, I'm going to just copy what we had over there back in here. So now we need to set these values, right? Uh, first name, last name, avatar. So they need to come from some sort of uh, some sort of function call that goes out to 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 the endpoint and get the data. So we need what well, what we can create is something called a custom hook. A custom hook is uh, instead of like use effects here, we can create our own. So the syntax, the convention is that you use, you prefix the custom hook by the word use. So let me define a function call. Hmm, I'll do it outside of here. You, you don't even have to put it inside the functional components. You can do function. Let's call this use fetch. Now this will be a very general uh, hook that goes out to get the data and then sets the value. So we need two things. We need the URL of what we want to fetch, and we need some sort of default response. I'll show you what this means later. So inside of use fetch, let's define some values that that some states that you, we can use to store the value from the Ajax response. So we're gonna use use state here. So we do const data, and then you have set data equals use states. And then default value will be the default response that we pass in from the parameter. Now in here, we need to 
define a function that uh, that we can use in the use effect hook. So the function will be responsible for doing the AJAX call. So I like to use async await here. So I'm going to do async function get data from API. And we're going to pass in the URL. So this async function will be, I'll show you why we have to do this instead of doing the uh, async function inside of use effect. So since it's async, we like to always put it in try catch. So the actual thing we'll be doing is const response equals await. We use the fetch uh, API to go out to the URL to get the data. And then we need the to set the actual data to be the response.json format. So now once this is uh, we have the data, we can set it to to the data hook value. So you can do this by calling the set data that we defined earlier. And then we do is loading is false. And then the data will just be whatever the data is. And then in the catch case, we'll have an error response. So that, that's it. Now we have a function here called get data from API. We want to use it somewhere. So we have to use it in something called a use effect hook. So the use effect hook gets run, gets uh, triggered every time there's a re-render. So it accepts a function call. And then in here, all we have to do is do this. And that's all there is in the use effect custom hook. Now this thing takes a secondary value uh, it's an array of values that we, we we can pass to it. So by default, use effect renders every single time there's a re-render. This gets called every time there's a re-render. I don't want to go out to the API every time this, this is gets re-rendered. So when you pass in a second parameter, it's an array of whatever the value is. This will make use effect trigger only when this value is changed. So it's very useful to uh, make this not overly render everything. So now this uh, use fetch hook, we wanted to return the data from the Ajax call. So we just have to return data. There you go. Now this is a use effects, use fetch custom hook. It's very nice encapsulated uh, function and you can use it pretty much for like any API endpoint you want to do. So now we need a way to call use effect. So we'll do it in the app functional component. So we're going to get two values. One is a random ID, which generates a number from one to 10. And then an API endpoint, which goes out to here and pass in the random ID as the endpoint. And the way we can call use effect, uh, sorry, use fetch functional hook is simple. It's you have to do, and let's just do user fetch response equals use fetch. So now we can use the the fun custom hook that we just defined earlier. And we'll pass in the API endpoint here, and then we'll give it a default value, an object that's uh, is loading. Let's say it's true, and then data is null initially, and that's it. Look how clean this is. The whole app, it's like you you encapsulate all the logic into one function, and here you just call it once. So we need to check uh, if. There's no response or is still loading. Then we're just re going to return uh, loading. And then otherwise, we can initialize some variables. Uh, so let's just do first name. last name, avatar, 
background user fetch response dot data dot data. I know this because this is just the way that the API returns it. It put in the word data here, but since we already have data here, um, it's gonna happen twice. But this is gonna work. So when I press save and I go to the app, ooh, now it's happening. It's rendering like a hundred times. So I probably got data limited. Uh, let's see. So let's let's see what happened. It's like rendering every single time. So we probably don't want to um, have this happen. So let's take this out and see what happens. Yeah, so if you take that out, it actually uh, runs once. Now that's very interesting because from what I read is that when you put it here, um, Let's go to React Hooks documentation. Let's go to the API reference. So this is what happens when we run into something unexpected. Now here on this section, conditionally firing on your fetch. The default behavior of fetch to fire the fetch after every completed render. That way, an effect always recreate it if one if its input changes. However, this may overkill in some cases, like subscription, for example. To implement this, pass a second argument to use effect that is an array of values that is effect depends on. Now the subscription will only be recreated when prop source changes. Passing an empty array input tells React that your effect doesn't append, depend on any value from the component, so that the effect will run only on mount and clean up on, on mount. It won't run on updates. Oh, okay, so I got it the opposite. So if I pass an empty here, it will only run once. Like on the, uh, com on the when the component mounts and on mount. But if I pass in a value for it to watch, it will watch that value and then it will update every single time. That's very interesting, something I just learned. So as you can see here, we got the same application as before, but this time we have very simple logic and we sort of like encapsulate all the logic into this use fetch hook. Now I'm still like learning about all of this stuff. It's still very new. Um, I hope to see more custom hooks from the community. Uh, I know Re Ryan Florence is doing something with the React router. So I look forward to see what you guys can come up with. And as always, all of this code is on GitHub and it's going to be on Pentaco website. So please remember to visit and subscribe to my YouTube page for updates. I plan to do a lot more videos in the future. See you guys next time.